hi guys welcome back in this video we are building this uh, music player ui in flutter so you can see there's this nice image which has been rounded off from the sides and then there's uh, a shadow that it has there's this arrow uh, button also and then there's this progress bar and then these three buttons for play pause and uh, forward and reverse so th these are the elements that we have to keep in mind while uh, building the project so what we'll do now is we'll uh, get started so we'll say flutter create music ui it'll take a while it'll build the entire project for us and now we'll cd into our music ui folder and we'll open it with our code editor i'm using vs code but you could be using android studio or any other code editor that you want not a problem we'll head over to our pubspec.yaml file and here we'll uh, below cupertino so we have to find where's cupertino icons but oh, it's not there anyhow so we have to uh yeah sorry it's here the cupertino icons and here we have to write font awesome flutter this is the package that we need we will put the cat symbol there and 8.5.0 Alright, so Flutter runs the Flutter pub get command for us and it will install this package for us automatically. And then what we'll do is we'll head over to the main.dot file and remove all the contents of this file. And we'll start writing from scratch. So we'll say import package flutter slash material dot dot. And this package already exists in Flutter uh, natively, so there's no issues. And the other package that we just installed, we'll also import it into our file. So we'll say font awesome flutter slash font awesome flutter dot dot. and by mistake i've written an extra r so now as you can see we don't have any errors and now we'll start writing the rest of the code which is void main run app and app is what we need to define here so we'll create a stateless widget so i'll say since i'm using uh, a snippets uh, plugin for flutter uh, in VS Code, so I can just write STL and it'll give me a stateless widget. And here I can write the name of the stateless widget as, widget as app. As soon as I wrote it, you can see the squiggly line, the red squiggly line here uh, went away. That means there, there are no errors as well in this file now. And here we have to uh, write a couple of things. So, firstly, we'll return a material app from here. So, we'll say material app and you can also get rid of this line if you want. Actually, it's not important. So directly we start with override and widget build, build context context and return material lap. And we'll write a couple of things here. So we don't want the debug banner and our home will be a widget called music player screen. So we'll say music player screen. We'll work on this widget soon. And we'll also define a theme. So we'll say theme now this is especially useful when you have multiple themes like let's say you have a dark theme and a, a white or a bright theme in your project so this can be really helpful at that uh, point of time so for now we'll set the primary color feel free to use any color of your liking i'm just using this color this should have been zero here so it's giving a red screen line here so it's saying that music player screen does not exist right which obviously we're aware of uh, and in our case since uh, I, sh I showed you this uh, app it has this play and pause right so that means we're using state here to toggle between players and play and pause that's why we need a stateful widget and not a stateless widget so i'll say stf and i'll get the stateful widget here and for the stateful widget, again, I'll just get rid of this directly. 
but before that I had to actually give the name the stateful widget stfu stateful widget and here I have to give it a name so the name will be music player screen and then I'll get rid of this and this looks all right to me the state looks all right and class extends and here we'll define a boolean with is playing and by default it will be false since it's false we'll by default see this play button and when we toggle it it will become is playing is equal to true so that's why we'll get a pause button i hope that makes sense and here this is written in container we don't want to return a container we'll want to return a scaffold and inside the scaffold we'll have a container and the container will have a child which will be a single scroll view so we want to capture all of this in a single scroll view okay and uh, the benefit of keeping the single scroll view in a container is that you can give it a width so the width we are using media queries so we'll say media query dot off context dot size dot width so based on the screen it will define or uh, uh, you know calculate the width and like I said uh, this container will have a child which is the main purpose of uh, even building this container in the first place and it will be of type widget single child scroll view which has a child called uh, which is a column and the column will help us create this nice icon here the downward arrow icon okay so inside the column we'll have children and widget So we have sized box height 50 comma and here we'll create a container. The alignment of this container will be top left. Okay. So we'll say alignment alignment dot top left we'll give it some margin from left we'll give it about 10 points of margin from left so we'll say margin edge insets dot only so you can have dot uh, all also but we, have, we want to use dot only because you want to give only a left uh, margin Then we're going to say child and I want to place an icon button. We have to find this icon. So we'll say icon button. Inside the icon button we have on pressed. That means uh, when it's pressed it will do nothing. It's basically null empty out here. And the icon is font awesome the library that we just used icons dot chevron down so we're using this font awesome library because we, we have to use all these different icons like this one this one this one and that's why we need it anyhow we will put a comma here and then in our icon button also we'll put a comma container also we'll put a comma so we put a comma because once we save it the uh, flutter formatter will kick into action and then it'll you know uh, with the lines that have a comma it will make sure that the next line starts on the the next thing starts on the next line and which is what we want exactly so once we've done this inside this container we'll also have a sized box of height 20 
not a child, it's just a height, 20 sized box. Okay, and then we want to create a container. So we'll say container and we'll give it a margin edge insets dot symmetric horizontal 20 and vertical 50 comma we'll give it a box de decoration we just it basically uh, doing some basic shadowing work before we actually build uh, the container for the for the image so we'll say margin and we'll give it a decoration box decoration and then we'll give it a border radius dot circular box shadow Here we'll have a color there are about six zeros actually so we'll say one two three four five six comma offset radius is zero so this all this work we're doing just to build this, the shadow that you can see behind this image right and it's completely optional you can completely skip it if you want if you don't want that uh, shadow there the main the most important thing is the image that we'll get to in about uh, two minutes time so we'll say plus radius and here with the box shadow we'll add another box shadow And here we'll say color so there has have to be six zeros again out here one two three four five six and offset is offset zero comma ten and spread radius zero and blur radius is thirty Okay, so far so good, only different colors of shadows. And here we'll just put commas. Like I said, commas helps us to keep things on a different uh, line. And then we have our uh, main child, which is the clip rectangle, which is the image. And this, um, we'll have to give it about a radius of about 20 to get this kind of, a, uh, you know, circular edges. So we'll say child. clip rectangle there are double r out here actually clip r rectangle and here we'll say border radius border uh, radius dot circular and 20 and the child is an image now the image could have been a different folder with assets and image but here what we're going to do is we're actually going to get the image from um, the internet directly from a cdn so we'll say network image inside that we'll put the link of an image and to find these images all you have to do is head over to pixels And you can find an image. So let's say uh, these are videos, but you could go to photos and you could find an image like this, for example. And you could get the number of this image, right? So the number is 1054391. All right. And in my case, I've already found an image, and the number of that image is 
5186869 this image uh, sorry i'll just open up my screen for the app this image is what i have found so i'm going to be using this image and all you have to do once you have that image number right so you have to use this link you have to say https images.pixels.com slash whatever the number of the image that you like you're going to say 5186869 and slash pixels photo dash 518869.jpg and then we're going to put some parameters here to auto compress the image for us and also we can give it the size that we want it to be for example height 650 and width 940 is what I need for this particular image all right so we have that in our network image now and we'll put a comma here so basically any image that you find on pixels you can use this type of link uh, if you don't want to type out this link manually i will leave uh, this code in github you can just copy and paste from there all you have to do is substitute your image uh, number here and here that is all you need to do and your and you'll find your image in your app uh, so this is basically cdn uh, by pic pixels that helps you to uh, directly embed any uh, pixel images inside your projects all right now we have to give it some width and height and we want it to fit right so width will be we'll use media query dot off and context dot size dot width multiplied by 0 0.7 and height will be media query dot off context dot size dot width multiplied by 0 0.7 again and then we want it to fit to the box and so I'm, I'm going to s stop this video here and in the next video we'll take a look at how to handle this this part and this part and also to and when uh, how do you run this program after building it so i hope this video has been helpful and you can subscribe so that you come to know when the next video comes out and also on this channel we'll be building a lot of such awesome ui tutorials so do stay subscribed and thanks a lot for watching